I have the Google Pixel 7 Pro here, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to install the popular custom kernel, Kira Sakura, on this device, as well as the regular Pixel 7 smartphone. This process involves a lot more setup than custom kernels used to require, due to the security protections Google has implemented in their Pixel smartphones. But if you have installed this kernel on other Pixel devices, then you may already be familiar with what is required here. To start off, we must have the bootloader of this device unlocked. If this is something that you have not done yet, and you are not sure how to do it, then be sure to look down in the video description below to find links to a previous guide that I have done on the channel that will walk you through all of the steps involved in unlocking the bootloader. You also need to have disabled the VB meta flags for both Verity as well as Verification. This is also something that I will be linking down below for those who need help getting caught up on the requirements here. We need to have the stable build of Majisk installed and the developer advises that we enable USB debugging mode from the developer mode menu as well. Now with all of that done, we can begin the installation guide for the Kira Sakura custom kernel on the Google Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. The latest version of this kernel has been released for Google's May firmware update so that is the build we have installed on this device. We will need to download both the custom kernel as well as a Majisk module called PowerHint. So in the XDA thread, look for the change log and then find the latest version. Again, you can find these downloads linked in the original post of the Kiri Sakura custom kernel thread on XDA. This thread will be linked in the video description below. So I'm finding the latest version here, which is version 1.0.4 of the new unified builds. And then after tapping on that, I am then downloading the custom kernel and then downloading the PowerHint module that matches the device I own. Pixel 7 Pro owners should download the Cheetah version of the module, while regular Pixel 7 owners should download the Panther version. Once those have been downloaded, we're going to go ahead and go into the Majisk application. Then tap on the Modules tab down here at the bottom. Select the Install from Storage button. And now we're going to find the PowerHint module that we just downloaded. Don't forget to reboot the phone after it has been installed so the module can be activated properly. As always, when the phone boots back up, I recommend going into the Majisk application, checking the modules tab, and making sure that new module that we just installed is activated properly. Now with that done, we're going to be installing the custom kernel zip file next. 
This kernel can be installed via the Franco Kernel Manager app, the EX Kernel Manager app, or the Kernel Flasher application. I believe the Franco and EX Kernel Manager apps are both paid. So in today's video, I'll be using the free Kernel Flasher app to install it. However, if you would like to customize the performance of your kernel or tinker with any of the other tunables, then I recommend buying the EX Kernel Manager app as I've had great success with it working on a variety of devices with a variety of different kernels. The GitHub page for this kernel flasher application is linked in that XDA thread, but I'll include the link in the video description below as well. Once we open up the application, we're going to check up here in the top card to find out which slot our device is currently booted into. Since we are on slot A, we're going to tap the view button within slot A. Now we're going to tap on the flash button that we see here. And we're going to flash an AK3 zip file. You should find that Kira Sakura zip file that we downloaded from the XDA thread. And once it's selected, it's going to execute the script and install the custom kernel for us. After the kernel has been installed, the last thing we need to do is reboot and then check to make sure everything has worked properly. So we're going to tap on that reboot button down there at the bottom and then tap on the reboot button again up at the top so that we're rebooting from Android back into the Android system. With our Google Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro booted back into Android, we can check the Android version section of the About Phone menu from within the Settings application to find the details about the kernel. The default kernel is labeled Android 13 on this build, but we can now see that the Kira Sakura kernel is currently installed. Seeing Kira Sakura in the kernel version here means that the installation of this kernel was a success and that everything was done properly. This custom kernel for the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro comes with a lot of features which are all detailed in the first post of the XDA thread. The goal of this custom kernel is to keep most of the subsystems as up to date as possible, which can be way ahead of the stock kernel that Google ends up releasing in their builds. Not only does this improve the security of the device, but it also squeezes a bit more performance out of it as well. The Kiri Sakura custom kernel also comes with some con contributions from other community developers as well, including work from Ardor97, KDragon, and Sultan XDA. Now that you have this custom kernel installed, you need to be careful about installing new over-the-air updates on your device. I mentioned this in the video about disabling Verity and verification, as once those VB meta flags have been disabled, they need to be disabled each time we install a new security update. I suspect the easiest way this can be done 
is using the Android Flash tool each month while making sure that those flags are disabled in the options. And then once the new security update has been installed, you can then reinstall the custom kernel afterwards. There is a post in this XDA thread that talks about the update process recommended by this developer. And I recommend subscribing to my channel here on YouTube so that you can be made aware of the video where I show you how the process works once the June security update has been released by Google. I hope this video has helped anyone who has been curious about trying a custom kernel on their Google Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro. This kernel from Freak07 on XDA has been available for many Google Pixel devices over the years and it continues to gain popularity. If you ran into any issues during this process, let me know down in the comments section below. I can't promise that I'll be able to help everyone, but I will certainly do my best to reply to the comments here and help out whenever I can.